it's hump day. Hump day! <laughs> it's hump day. Hump day! <laughs> There's a weird delay between when it says we're starting and when it actually goes green. <laughs> hey, everybody, this is Bradley Benner with Semantic Mastery. This is Hump Day Hangouts for January 18th, 2017. It's 4 p.m. Eastern. We only have a couple on uh, with me today. I've got Chris and Marco. Hey, Chris, how are you? Doing good. Glad to be here. And we got Marco. How you doing, buddy? Hey, man, what's happening? Um, guys, this, uh, you know, after last week, we did the format with um, trying to use the webinar jam comments, and that didn't work out very well. So we kind of switched back. We're using the new webinar jam sessions like overlay. So it's not, we're not using hangouts for the actual video. That's why the interface or excuse me, the video that you're watching now looks a little bit different uh, with the layout. But for all intents and purposes on your end as a viewer, as an attendee, uh, nothing will be different. We're going to continue using the Google Plus pages like we have been. Um, and we're going to use that as the event page as the place to post your questions. You can access that event page through the notification emails that get sent out once you've signed up and registered for the Hump Day Hangout series. If you have not registered for the Hump Day Hangout series, please do so, semanticmastery.com forward slash hump day. And uh, once you register, it redirects you to a thank you page. There's a video with me explaining that if you click on a link above, <laughs> that you can subscribe to be notified to the entire series for, for an entire year. You can unsubscribe at any time, but I recommend that you do so. That way notifications get sent out as well as uh, the link to the event page every single week will be sent out in that notification email so that you can post your questions early. So um, we just got to train you guys to get in in on the new system with us. Uh, I think it's going to make it beneficial for everybody in the long run, and uh, hopefully you guys will agree. That said, I think the only announcement that I know of, because Adam's having difficulties attending today, is uh, we've got a citation service up now, guys. That's um, <clears throat> Actually, I haven't even had a chance to click through and look at it yet. But yeah, we've got a, a citation service now available uh, for people that want to purchase citations. These are high-end citations. They're not the, the, the cheap shitty ones. So what I recommend is if you're doing lead gen properties or things like that, you can go with the cheaper uh, services if you feel like it. But if you want the Cadillac of citations, we have that available now. That's semanticmastery.com forward slash citations. Um, Hernan, or, uh, Hernan, Marco or somebody can post that on the event page for you guys. Check it out. If you're doing any sort of client work and that kind of stuff, um, these are the same citations that I use in my business, the same citation service for all of my clients, very, very, very high quality citations. You can't get any better than what uh, we have available. So check that out. Do we have anything else we need to announce before getting into questions, guys? Do you know? Yeah, I, I'd like to add that that video powerhouse is almost ready to go, man. I thought yeah. we've been, we're hard at work. I mean, we, we, the sites are being built. We have the categories. We have, uh, uh, you know, we, we actually have someone that, that, that checks the videos to make sure that they go into the correct category. So we're going to keep them, you know, keep the theme, keep them powered up. And then I'm at, I'm adding some, some extra sauce into the mix, you know, some RYS and some other stuff that I know will, will power up the network, give it authority, give it relevancy, give it trust. And so I, I think it, it, it's totally going to rock. And at, at the same time, what we're going to do is we're going to limit the number of, sorry, but I mean, it has to be done and we have, we have to let people, we're going to limit at first the number of people that we let in just to make sure that, that, that we can serve uh, that amount of people that, that the system can handle. And, you know, as, as we go, we will open again for, for more people, Ho hopefully, I, well, I don't know. We'll see how it works. We'll see how, how it all works out. But I just want people, I'm really excited about this because we've been working really hard to make this happen. I mean, and we're right, right there. We're right there, man. So I'm really excited about that. Hey, look, we had the uh, latecomers, the fashionably late members. <laughs> so, oh, hey, guys, I just woke up. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, I had to do a computer restart, but I know Marco was talking about Video Powerhouse, which is awesome. I'm getting super pumped about that. Yeah. Yeah, it's guys, what's up? Well, and Hernan, yeah, hey, what's up, man? Hey. Hey. 
Hey, you're not just a FYI. I'm not sure if it's webinar jam, but your mic sounds really high. You might want to adjust the levels. Yeah, I don't know why. I'll try. I'll try to figure that out. You got to take the microphone out of your mouth. Oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, video powerhouse is going to be crazy, and we got like people staff in place now that are like monitoring like the submissions and making sure they go to the right categories. Like Marco said, there's it's crazy. So we're going to have the the support team behind it and all that, guys. It's taken us. Shit, I think we announced it originally over a year ago, didn't we? <laughs> Video Barrows or, or close to a year ago. It's been a long time. I know that. We've been working on it forever. So, uh, But it's getting better, guys, and um, it's going to be incredibly powerful. So check that out. That said, uh, Adam, since you are usually the one that gives announcements, we mentioned citations and Video Powerhouse. Does anything else need to be mentioned? Uh, I think that's it. If you're in the um, IFTTT SEO Academy, you're going to be getting an email with the webinar just for you. So by all means, come check it out. Um, that's going to be tomorrow. Um, and then our what our local Kingpin uh, people have got a cool webinar going on tonight. Um, so that's I think you're going to be talking about a case study, right? For the people who yeah, are, are in the local Kingpin. Yeah, I forgot to mention that uh, the local Kingpin update webinar number two is immediately following Hump Day Hangouts today. Um, it's going to be mainly member Q&A other than a new case study announcement where um, Hernan and I are tag teaming a uh, new case study in a different industry, a local case study. And we're going to be, um, you know, basically adding all that training to the local Kingpin training site. And once that's done, once the second case study has been added, um, which will be in a couple months, it'll you know be complete in a couple months. The price is, is definitely going up on that because uh, it's a really, really good course. There's a ton of information in there. And this second case study, we're going to take a brand new business from the ground up and build it like for real uh, using AdWords, um, AdWords for video, remarketing, Bing advertising and Facebook ads for local. And so we're going to do that together and get this business off the ground. Uh, it's for a local gym. And um, and that's going to be awesome because it's we're going to literally take a guy's business that's just got started and make him get him profitable and get leads coming in the door. And that's going to be added to the training. And that's uh, again, we're going to announce that local kingpin update webinar too, like the details of that. And then uh, we're going to add the training to the membership site and then we'll do the results at the end of like 60 days, roughly um, in the local uh, update webinar number three. So. And Definitely check that on? out, guys. Also, we cover a lot of that kind of stuff inside the master class on a on a biweekly basis. Um, that's kind of like the ongoing um, case study group. <laughs> so, if you guys are interested in getting, you know, um, that kind of details like case studies where we go like through step by step on how things are done and show results and basically in real time, um, the master class is where you want to be for that. So, yeah. Can you guys hear me better now? Yeah. Is it better? Okay. Mm, yeah. Mm, better. Yeah. Mobile. Okay. Yeah. okay cool. yeah. No, I just wanted to add to what um, Bradley was saying about uh, putting a completely, you know, completely um, from scratch case study, like a success story, completely from scratch. One of the challenges is to do it with as low budget as possible. You know, that was one of the conditions from the client. There's going to be a ton of fun because that way, you know, we kind of be working with that and progressing that and reinvesting the um, the profits back into the campaign so mm -hmm. that we can get, a, a, you know, a really good case study for you guys. So stay tuned. And that's, uh, I think that's going to segue into whatever we're doing with Facebook in terms of training in 2017, which is also going to be really, really good. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about it because uh, this is going to be really cool to take, you know, somebody's brand new business and help them to grow it and get profitable quickly. Um, that's that's awesome. So um, I'm really looking forward to this as well. And this will be the first time that Hernan and I have worked like together on a project uh, this closely in quite a while. <laughs> so, I mean, we, we used to, in the, back in the day, a couple of years ago, we used to work on various projects a lot closer, uh, more often, but now we don't do it nearly as much. So this will be kind of fun to get a chance to work with him as well, so. Yep. All right, guys, I'm gonna take the screen and we're gonna get into questions. We're pretty much done on announcements, correct? think so. All right. Let me um, close out on all these various windows that I have open that you guys don't need to see. Real quick. Shut all the porn down. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> uh, Bradley, can you, or maybe you went over this before I got here, but do you have the, um, did you go over how this works now with the new setup to, for people, like how they're supposed to uh, post questions and all that? Yep. Okay. Yep. Basically guys, just for one more time to, re to recap, um, go log. Uh, if you're not signed up, 
for the Hump Day Hangout series, which is now done through semanticmastery.com forward slash hump day. It'll take you to a registration page. Go register. Then on the thank you page that it redirects you to after registration, uh, there's a video. I explain what to do, but there's a button, a link above the video that says that you can subscribe or register for the entire series. All you got to do is click that one time and then go confirm your subscription and then you'll get notifications for the next 52 weeks. Uh, again, if at any time you don't want to be notified of the upcoming Hump Day Hangout, that's fine. You can unsubscribe at any time. But in those notification emails will be the link every week to the event page so that you can uh, post your event, your questions early. Okay, so again, register, subscribe to the series. Okay, it's a two-step process. There's a video that explains how to do it. And then you will be notified every week of the upcoming webinar with a link to the event page for you to post your questions, okay? All right, that said, let's do it. Lee's up first. He says, is Google, is Google AMP increased rank? Do you suggest Google AMP? I'm going to hand that one to Marco. Okay, does it increase rank? It, it targets a different section of, of the algorithm. It, it's just totally geared towards, uh, towards that type of page. And, and really what, what it works uh, more on is something uh, that's newsworthy, news related, uh, and things like that. Now we we have a plugin that does AMP that does uh, pages as as uh, that does AMP pages, and it does posts as AMP pages. Uh, we're we're going to make it available. We have to make up just a couple of tweaks to it. We had it ready, but then we discovered that, that there was a, a little bug in it that we needed to fix. We have it ready. The, the thing that I would tell you is test. I mean, it, it's, it's what we always say. Take it, use it. Use it the way it's supposed to. Go and look at the documentation. Google tells you everything about AMP and, and how to use it, what it's for. So, Lee, that, that's, what I, that's what I would say. Just go and look at the documentation and see what Google wants you to do with it. I mean, there, there are times when you do need to follow what what Google says, and this is one of those instances. Yep. Um, I just wanted to add real quick that uh, the other day I, I was browsing on the mobile, on, on the phone, and I started noticing on the search engine results pages on the SERPs uh, within Google, uh, within, yeah, within Google on the mobile phone, some of them will start um, uh, showing like a, light, a little icon that's showing accelerated mobile pages. You know what I mean? So it will start showing those results with a little icon to the left of it on the on the on the listing that says AMP, you know, or accelerating more repeats. I think it's a little lightning or something like that, and that gives you uh, the idea that you know uh, Google is actually starting to index these pages and it's starting to give in priority on mobile results. This is super important because you know like. Most of, of your clients will be on mobile anyways, and you want your mobile versions to load as fast as possible. You know what I mean? So that's why we're doing the AMP, uh, the AMP thing. And, you know, I started noticing that, and I wanted to, you know, tell you guys to be, you know, aware of that. Yep. Very cool. Mark O'Connell is up next. He says, hey, guys, hope you you're all starting the year with a bang. I'm excited about this year and believe I will be able to finally join the mastermind. So looking forward to that. I believe you will finally be able to join as well, Mark. Uh, and that's all it takes guys is the belief that you can do it and you can make it happen. So, uh, we look forward to having you, Mark. My question is, how are you indexing your citations? I still have quite a few not indexed and they were built a while ago. Now, if I just copy and paste the URL of the citation page into Google and it doesn't show, does it mean that it's not indexed or may my, may my link still be indexed? Cheers. Okay, a couple things, Mark. Yeah, there's a lot of citations that are slow to index or they don't index or you won't see them in, um, you know, like the backlink analysis tools such as Majestic and uh, Ahrefs and things like that. A lot of the times you won't see them. It's similarly to Web 2.0 links. Right. It's very similar to that in that a lot of the times you will not see those backlinks in link analysis tools. A better way to find citations to see if citations are recognized or indexed, as you call it, because they don't have to be in Google's index for Google to know that they're there. Just so you understand that. Um, but a better way to determine whether your citations are being counted or found 
is to use a tool such as Bright Local. That's the one that I use. I know there's another one that other pe uh, people um, often use called whitespark.ca, I believe it is. I've been using Bright Local for about six years, well, at least five years. Um, and I, and I, I don't plan on changing because I just really, really, I'm really familiar with Bright Local. It's a great, great service. Okay. And Bright Local will show you, uh, you know, it'll do basically um, a count of all of your citations that it can find on the web. And it's not 100% accurate either, but it's a lot more accurate than link analysis tools are for finding citations. Okay. Um, and the other thing is, is remember, and we talked about this many, many times because people always ask a similar question when it comes to web 2.0 links from the IFTTT networks not showing. But if you go into Search Console and you take a look, I don't remember which, it's one of the drop downs in the left hand sidebar. But if you look at uh, links to site, um, links to your site or something like that, it you click on that and Google will show you what it's recognizing. Now, within the last few months, and Terry Kyle did a blog post about this, but within the last few months, Google has started to show less and less links uh, than it used to. That doesn't mean that they're not still seeing them though, because my guess is a lot of those you will still see uh, in the search console area. But again, just to double check to see if your uh, citations are being counted, I would recommend using a citation service, uh, or excuse me, a um, you know a local marketing service such as uh, Bright Local or White Spark. Okay. Um, the other thing you can do, what I always do whenever I get citations back from one of the you know services that uh, I I would use, uh, I would always just take the spreadsheet, copy all the profile URLs or the, the citation page URLs, whatever, and then put them into um, indexing services, right? And I used multiple indexing services. However, we during our mastermind webinar last week with our awesome link building manager, Dedia, he was, uh, he expressed that express indexer, um, express dot indexer, I think it is, or something like that. It's, uh, I can't, let me see if I can find the link. I don't have an affiliate link for it, but it doesn't matter. Cause these, these guys, I was using this, um, hold on a minute. Let me, I can't talk in type at the same time, guys, so excuse me. Uh, Expressindexer.solutions, okay? Expressindexer.solutions. He says that they are by far the best uh, indexing service that he's ever used. And they recently, within about the last two months or so, they redid how, uh, like their whole entire system and how they index links. And he's getting an 80% uh, indexing rate from spam links, guys. We're talking GSA links. <laughs> GSA spam links, he's getting 80% indexing rate, which is phenomenal. I mean, that's unheard of, right? And so, and that's using this service right here. So, um, you know, I'm going to be using, the, I, we already have a subscription to this. We have, because we used to use this for uh, ATM or mass page generator sites, that that type of stuff for indexing those sites. So, uh, but I, I'd stopped using it because we, we haven't been building many of those sites recently, but uh, apparently now um, this is the best service available. So I'm going to be using this a lot more. Okay, so check it out. All right, next, Phoenix Car Accident Chiropractor. It's a mouthful. Have you guys ever seen the new Serplify, or have you guys seen the new Serplify by Momia? It's a SERP sacred type software. Here's a YouTube video. Yeah, I've heard about it. We've had a bunch of people already message us asking us what we think. Um, I, I don't have an opinion on it. Um, I probably won't ever have an opinion on it because I'm not going to test it, only because if I'm going to be building mass gen page generator sites, I'm going to be using the ATM, lead gadget and the ATM, um, just because I kind of have, you know, a history with those guys and that software, and I know it well, and I don't need another one. So uh, personally, it's not, I, I don't, I, you know, I've had some um, bad experiences with some of their software in the past, so I don't know. I can't speak about this one in particular. Um the, you know, Surplify, I have no idea, but, you know, there's a bunch of different types of mass page generators out there now. And as far as I know, uh, from the ones that I have tested, there's no competition. A the ATM is by far the best. It is rather expensive, though. It's more for like agency level people. Um, so, you know, you got to take that into consideration as well. You guys want to comment on this at all? Has anybody looked at this? No, I, I, I don't have time. I have too much stuff going on, man. I wish I had some yeah. time to check it out and be able to tell people yes or no. Um, you know, sorry if any if anyone has tried it though, and and they have an opinion, you you you're welcome Post it. to let us know. Yeah, yeah we'd what, be happy to definitely. We could have somebody on, and if you've got yeah. some experience, we'll talk to you ahead of time. But yeah, share it. And I mean, for me, I just look at it and be like, well, I don't know if it's going to be better. But if you're not looking for something automated like the ATM, which I would say maybe you should be, but you know, how about 
I don't know. I'd like to see the differences from like that and maybe Serp Shaker because I'm sure this is a plugin probably. Yeah, I'm not sure how it works, but I mean, like I said, yeah, I, I'm just not. If I'm going to do mass page general, like mass page sites, I'm going to use AATM because I'm comfortable with it and uh, I've been using it for shit over two years now. So, uh, you know, uh, that's what I'm going to stick with. I'm not really going to test one of the new tools just because there's a learning curve involved and I just don't need another one. You know what I mean? That's kind of like keyword tools. I probably have no shit, at least a dozen keyword tools. <laughs> I don't know why I have so many of them because I only ever use Google Trends, uh, Power Suggest Pro, and then the keyword planner anyways. <laughs> so I don't know why I have so many damn keyword tools, but every time one comes out, they make a million promises and I always pick it up because I want to check it out. And uh, there you go. Money wasted. Now they collect digital dust. So Kane, yeah, nothing, it, nothing. Just, just just to get in there with uh, about that keyword research, nothing beats uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Power suggest pro. I totally yeah, agree. Nothing, I was about nothing, to say, Bradley, you got that nothing. link for your uh, training stuff you did. That was, a, I think that's still a good one. I've sent people there before. Yeah, it's dated now, but uh, just go to keywordsuggest.co. Keywordsuggest.co. You can opt in. Uh, it's free, guys. And then I get to go through keyword research training and exactly how I use the tools that are freely available. And then I do talk about, obviously, Power Suggest Pro because it's super, super awesome. And it's cheap and inexpensive with a one time cost. You'd be stupid not to pick it up. <laughs> if, you, if you ever need keywords, Power Suggest Pro is awesome. So, but keywordsuggest.co, you can opt in and then you'll get. Uh, It'll redirect you to the training site where you can uh, go through the keyword research training that I did. It's a bit dated, but the principles are still the same, guys. They're tried and true, timeless principles, so to speak. All right. K's up next. Hi, guys. A couple quick things. First, I'm testing out Mega Ray. Was impressed. I put in a ticket and they called me on the phone. <laughs> That's fantastic. I know Jude um, and the developers, they have quite a support team behind them. So um, that's another reason why we promoted that product because I know how much um, – development and support is behind that product guys so we'll report back after some tests i'll be glad to hear it Kay. anxious to hear what your results are next anyone have issues with the burner app on phone sometimes not worker working with google coming back and saying that number's not valid yes that is a known problem or issue Kay. um that is a that is a problem in fact we have even started having issues with our vas in the philippines uh using sim cards for phone verifying brand new accounts What's interesting is if you have a if you have a Google account that you need to like add a recovery phone number to. So you've already got the Google account, right? Let's say you already have a Google account and you need to add a recovery phone number to it or you want to enable YouTube live stream, live streaming from YouTube, like YouTube live events. You need to enable that or uh, you know become YouTube partner verified, whatever. You can use a burner app for any of those instances, a burner app phone number for any of those instances and it will work fine. It just won't work on registering the Gmail address for the first time when you're creating the Gmail account. It doesn't work there. But if you can get it created and then add your own phone number for recovery options and uh, or live streaming, uh, you know, enabling live streaming, that sort of thing, that those numbers will still work fine. So what's the solution, right? Well, what we've been doing is I've been going through um, I, I, my bookmarks are still screwed up. But let me see if I can find it real quick. Um here we go. This should be it here. Son of a bitch. My, <laughs> my, my bookmarks are all screwed up. Metro biz Kendrick Mayer posted it the last time, but, uh, let's see. Let me see if I can find it real quick. If I can't, I'll try to post it on later. Um, Oh, there it is. Bulkpva.com. And I know I've got it bookmarked. I just got to put it in the right place. This guy right here is where this is the guy that I buy all of our, um, uh, YouTube or Gmail accounts from now, guys. Phone verified Gmail accounts. Okay, it's from this one, bulkpva.com. I've sent this dude a lot of business because he's, um, you know, we buy a ton of them through for, uh, you know, our network builders for the IF done for you IFTTT networks and stuff like that. Um, as well as anytime I need him for my own projects now, I just buy them from him. He sends you a spreadsheet with the phone verified accounts with the recovery options and all that kind of stuff. The, 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 the trick is once you get them back, you need to log in and bind them to your IP or to your proxies if you're using proxies. Uh, like, for example, if you're using Browsio, you want to, as soon as you get those back, within 72 hours, you want to try to log into every one of those accounts that you get. But that's all we do now, guys, is purchase the accounts. It's too much, it takes too much time and effort to try to phone verify your own accounts now, guys. 
It's so much cheaper to have somebody else just do it for you. Buy 25 or 50 at a time. Uh, try to log into them all. But so what? Even like for the for how cheap they are, and the amount of headache and time that it will save you to have some available for whenever you need them, uh, it's totally worth it. Spend a few bucks, pick them up. That guy's a good guy. He'll replace them if they um if they're not working once like right after he delivers them. After a few days, he won't replace them. But um, he's just a good dude, and I uh, you know again I don't mind sending him business, and um he'll take care of you. Okay. All right, finally, just watch the YouTube side of the course. Great stuff. How would you recommend YouTube structure for local local cities? Do you agree with others that say channel name equals keyword plus USA, then playlist equals keyword plus state, and then video titles equals keyword plus counties, and in description to put in the cities? If not, what channel or in silo structure do you recommend? Finally, how many silos per site? Thanks. Happy New Year. All right, that's a loaded, I mean, that's a long question, Kay. There's a few things in there. Um, first of all, I wouldn't, you know... I wouldn't go after create a playlist on a state level and then do video titles via county level because typically that's not – first of all, a state playlist could be a rather large playlist. And other than having just the state in common with all the videos in that playlist, there could be a lot of differences, uh, you know, like topical differences, right? So uh, niche niche differences, industry differences, right? And so because of that, they're the only common denominator or theme among all of those in a play in a playlist would be the state, which I think is too broad. Now, typically what I will do is, and I don't usually do this with YouTube channels, but basically when I'm siloing out a website for like, um, you know, a, a, a contractor that covers a large service area or something like that, is I will create the silos based on counties. So the playlist would be a county based playlist. And then the video titles would be the city, you know, keyword plus city. And the reason I say that is because most people don't search for service plus county, right? Most people, when they search Google, they search service plus city or keyword plus city, right? With local intent, most of the time, it's going to be a city-based search, not a county-based search. So because of that, you should be targeting the city name and the uh, video title, which is the SEO title, right? And that's because that's the most important place for the keyword. So if you want to rank for a city, typically you're going to want to target the city in the title. So I would generally do playlists in one of two ways. I would either create a playlist based on a specific city or a county if I'm going to be covering multiple locations within the county. So, for example, um, Fairfax County, Virginia, it has, I believe, like 23 cities within that county. So I might have a playlist for Fairfax County, Virginia, and then I would have individual videos in there. But Fairfax, Virginia, which is Fairfax is also a city in Fairfax County. So it's the city of Fairfax that might have 50 different businesses in it. So why not have a city of Fairfax playlist, right? Does that make sense? So it, it just it's just about containers, building containers, guys. All a playlist is is a container, right? And you got to think about whatever you put in that container, it should be relevant to the other items in that container. And so the hierarchy and how you build that is really going to determine is going to depend on the specific project. I can't tell you specifically without knowing more details about what you're trying to do, Kay. But you got to think about it logically. Like again, I will do usually a playlist based upon a city and have multiple videos in that uh, because I'm targeting different niches in that city. Again, the common denominator being the city. Or I'll target by county if it's for the same business or the same industry. I'll target by county uh, the playlist by county. I'll build the playlist or the silo as a county-based silo. And then all the individual videos will be keyword plus city name within that county. And or I will build a playlist based around a niche, an industry, and then place various videos in that uh, niche-based or industry-based playlist which is an, uh, just another silo, right? And by the way, guys, you can have the same video in more than one playlist. So if it makes sense, for example, let's say that you've got 15 plumbing clients across the state of Virginia, okay? And then you also have uh, various clients in all different industries as well. Well, you could have in Fairfax, Virginia, you could have a Fairfax playlist that you have all the various businesses that you service or that you serve in Fairfax in that playlist. But then you could also have a plumbing playlist right? For a, pl a playlist for plumbers, plumbing services, whatever. In that one, you also have the Fairfax plumber as well as plumbers from all over the state of Virginia, right? So, so you would end up having that 
plumber from Fairfax video in two different playlists. The, the Fairfax playlist as well as the plumber playlist because it makes sense to do so, right? So just remember that, guys. Okay, I can't give you the exact structure without knowing more details. I can tell you typically a playlist on a state level is going to be a bit too broad. Unless you're doing, uh, you're, you're narrowing in on one specific industry and that's all the videos in your entire channel are going to be about that one industry, in which case then you might want to do playlists by state because you probably have less overall videos in each playlist. I don't know if that makes sense, but hopefully I uh, explain that in a way that you all can understand. Anybody want to comment on that at all? That was a, a, a bit complicated. No, I, I, I would just add that, that if she does proper SEO, She's going to geolocate her video anyway. Yep. Right. She's going to add that. So all all of the other things that you could add to it would would just be like like Google is going to know what what the geolocation of the video is anyway, if you're doing your proper SEO with the video. Yep. So just remember that, guys. The, the easiest way to think about a silo, guys, is just nothing other than a container, and everything that you put in that container should be similarly themed. Right. There should be uh, they should be relevant to the other items within that container in some way, shape or form. OK, it's up to you to decide as to what the relevancy is and how to create those containers and what to place in those containers. All right. Greg's up next. When using CrowdSearch me for wanting traffic, we're having issues with them right now, guys. <clears throat> so just so you know, uh, when using CrowdSearch for me, wanting for wanting traffic to come into our site from Google partner like Digo, do we need to start? at a kind of buffer site to start with the search and bring the traffic into the Google partner, then to our site, like use Tumblr to go to Digo and enter the website, or can we start with Digo directly? Thanks. Um, you can do both, Greg. I mean, honestly, you'd be better off to set up both so that you have some variety or diversity in the traffic. Remember, I call this CT spam, guys, click-through spam. That's what it is, right? We're spamming uh, the click-through rate. <laughs> so, um, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's Technically, it's probably against the terms of service, but um, whatever. Um, um, uh, what do you call it, at uh, Marco? An unapologetic spammer. <laughs> He's an unapologetic spammer. Yeah, that's right. We, that's what we do. So uh, you know, as far as that, Greg, I, I would do both. Un unapologetic, and, but unapologetic and unrepentant. Unrepentant spammer. spammer. So you can do both, Greg. I mean, uh, most of the time, I, I for speed's sake, I've set them up just go direct from a social site to wherever I want to send the, you know, ultimately the traffic end up. Uh, for social referral traffic, it usually goes to a money site. Well, same thing for um, YouTube videos as well. But it's up to you, Greg. It really doesn't matter. You can do both. In fact, I, again, I recommend that you do both so that you can um, add some diversity to your, uh, you know, your traffic streams. All right. Brian's up. Have you any... Any suggestions how to use Alexa to ramp up voice search results? There has to be a way to speak to Alexa. Is that the Amazon thing? What is Alexa? Alexa, you're not, you're, let's see. Think, I'm thinking of, um, uh, what is the Le gotta, uh, ramp up voice search results? I'm not sure I understand the, what he's trying to manipulate here. Ask questions and I would think of people also ask who's something the big underlying voice search. I'm not sure what the question is, Brian. I'm I'm not hundred percent. Anybody else going to try to interpret this for me? No, yeah, I don't understand it either, no, Brian. If you could reframe it or re ask it. Um uh, the only Alexa I know is the uh do you know the directory where you can right. get how I many don't know if that has anything to do with voice search, but yeah. That's this. I yeah. was thinking, what's that stupid thing, Amazon Echo? Is that what it's – the thing that now people buy and they sit and they talk and they say, uh, Amazon, buy, whatever, or <laughs> what the hell is it called? I don't know. I don't have it. So that's what I thought he was talking about. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what you're saying, Brian, to be honest. I don't know how we – what you're – as far as like ramp up voice search results, something. There is something big underlying voice search. If you can tell it what questions you want to be found on, I think it can be huge. Care to comment or suggest? Again, I'm not sure, Brian. It, as far as trying to get ranked for questions, that is the hummingbird algorithm, uh, the, the hummingbird layer to the algorithm that was, was added. Damn, it's been three years now, hasn't it? It's been three years since hummingbird was introduced, um, which is crazy. 
but that's that's specifically what that was for was um, more complex search queries, mainly driven be because of voice search, because of mobile devices. That's really what the birth of Hummingbird uh, was for, was because of people asking or speaking their search queries in and that they're naturally more complex because they're speaking instead of typing. And because of that, uh, that they, you know, the hummingbird algorithm was added or the layer was added to the algorithm to help to try to understand those more complex queries and match them with the content that would best, you know, solve that uh, user's search, right? And so again, if you want to try to target that specifically, voice search, I don't know how that works in the background, but when you when you talk your voice search in, all it does is transcribe it to text anyways, and then it searches that text. So you can manipulate uh, the the questions, you know, basically the hummingbird algorithm. You can manipulate that by posting questions in your content and then answering those questions. And that you can see over and over and over again through knowledge graph answers, guys. When you guys ask a question into Google, whether via by ser voice search or by typing it in. And usually when you start to type a question in, what do you do? You see uh, Google suggest, right? Autocomplete. And you end up selecting one of the questions anyways. And you click on that. Most of the time you're going to see knowledge, a knowledge graph answer or an answer in knowledge graph in the top of the search results, which is just coming from one of the pages listed on page one. And it's because somebody wrote the question out in the content and then answered the question. And uh, knowledge graph, I believe, at least it used to be, you didn't even really have to have the structured data in place for that to be pulled in. Although now you probably have to have it marked up. And Marco, you, you're testing a lot of shit with that right now. Um, do you have any comments on that? Yeah, I'm planning on making the, the knowledge graph my bitch. <laughs> okay, well, there you go, Brian. <laughs> the knowledge graph is going to be Marco's bitch. I, I hope that answered your question. <laughs> This reminds me, sorry, Bradley, but if you if you guys, I don't know if you guys have ever watched the, if YouTube, um, if Google was a guy series, I don't know if you, if you ever watched those videos, Bradley. Um, if Google was a guy, just search for it on YouTube, it's on YouTube, it's super fun. And it's a parody of, of what, what would happen if, you know, Google was a guy like behind a desk answering questions. And it's a lot of fun. And it, uh, you know, at some point it gets super weird with the, um, with the voice search, you know, mm -hmm. um, and it's a lot of fun. So if you, if you guys want to go ahead and, and after the, the webinar, go ahead and check it out. It's, if Google was the guy, there's like five or six episodes, something like that. It's super fun. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, Brian, sorry. Um, you know, if, if I'm not sure where the Alexa thing came in and all that, but if, uh, if you can clarify, I'm kind of curious now Jordan's up next. He says, yo, can anyone remind me how to make Digo library public facing? Is that possible? Um, before, yeah, Jordan, I'm not. before you answer, I'd like to give Jordan a shout out because he's so active in our IFTTT Academy V2.0 Facebook group, just answering questions, sharing. So, Jordan, thank you for everything you do, man, and, and just keep it up. Just keep ranking and, and, and taking over niches. Yeah, and um, I'm not sure, Jordan, why you're having any issues with um, with that because when you set up the applet, so like, let's go to applets real quick, and we set up new applet. We'll say if this, uh, we'll just use a feed, new feed item. We're just going to walk through this real quick, guys. Just give me a second. Semanticmastery.com feed. We'll just go with the default feed for now, create trigger. And then we're going to select Digo here. Now, right here, add a public bookmark. When you set up the account with the, the applet, if you add a public bookmark, it should, by default, because of what you select here, add it to your public bookmark library. So I'm not sure what you mean by that, Jordan. Uh, if you were using the recipes or the applets, as they're called now, um, which I know you've got plenty of experience, so this is really just for everybody else's benefit. If you select the add a public bookmark, it should automatically be public. So I'm not sure what the problem is unless something has changed recently that I'm unaware of. So if you can um, clarify that, Will's up. Hi, Bradley. Two new newbie questions about IFTTT. I just purchased my full two-tier network from Service Space Marketplace. The first posts from my site have been syndicated. In the management dash, I see that over half the properties are showing not yet checked. What do I need to get do to get them up and running? What does that mean, Adam, in Service Space? 
Sorry, one more time. I'm dealing with support tickets about some stuff. Um, he says, "I let's see the I bought I purchased my first full two tier network from Surfspace. The first posts from my site have been syndicated in the management dashboard. I see that over half the properties are showing as not yet checked. <clears throat> what do I need to get them up and running?" So I'm guessing then that he's using IFTTT network management. Um, in which case, if you just got that, then it may not have literally checked them yet. So, I mean, it takes time. They don't immediately check all properties right away. That way we don't um, have issues. So I would give it 24 hours. If you still have that, uh, put a ticket in at support, excuse me, or email support at searchspace.com. Yeah, the other thing is try posting another post to your, your blog and um, let it syndicate. Uh, because again, just similar to when you first set up an IFTTT network, sometimes the first post or even two or three of the first posts don't end up syndicating to all the networks properly. And it's called priming the network guys, priming the pump basically. Uh, it's something that just happens, I'm not sure why, but sometimes you have to post two or three posts before all of the triggers fire correctly anyways. So it may be something to do with that, Will. Just go ahead and post another post if you can, um, and, and and check it then. And yeah, if you're having con another, if you're if for whatever reason you're not seeing reporting like it's supposed to be, just contact supported service space. I I don't have my hands in that project very much, guys. That's um, Adam's been managing that with our partners in that business um, quite a bit. So I I really don't have a lot of answers for that. Sorry, but support will take care of you. We got a lot of support staff there now, so. Uh, next one. I recently heard you on a webinar say not to syndicate posts from the money site beyond the first tier branded ring because of footprint issues. That is correct. I immediately went and disconnected the three persona rings. Please, can you advise on what I should be doing that to them now or with them now and how can they be put to good use? Okay. Well, um, this has been covered so many damn times. I'm not picking on you. I'm just saying this has been covered so many times in Hump Dave Hangouts. It's absolutely um, one of the most frequently asked questions we get. That said, if you go to support.semanticmastery.com, support.semanticmastery.com, that's where our knowledge base is. There's an IFTTT SEO Academy section, and in there are a bunch of frequently asked questions. And I know this question's got to be in there at least two or three different times where I've answered it two or three different ways because this is a question that has been coming up for two years over and over and over again. Very, very quickly, I can say that the, the reason why we don't, we hadn't been recommending two tier networks was because there are footprint issues on the persona based networks. The, the second tier networks is if you don't have related content from other sources being published on a regular basis to the tier, the second tier networks, which is why if you have a two tier network, you should be in, in uh, injecting if for a blog syndication, I mean a two tier network for blog syndication, you should be in um, adding additional content uh, or additional related content RSS feeds to the tier two triggers, right? So you log in the IFTTT account on tier two, so that there would be tier two A, tier two B, tier two C. There'd be three IFTTT accounts that you would log into and set up another set of recipes for each related content source so that you're publishing additional content to tier two from other sources, right? Related content. Okay, topically relevant content, but that's a nightmare. It's a pain in the ass. It's hard to maintain. It's hard to manage. Uh, so I've been recommending against that forever um, until RSS Master came out, which is Damon Nelson's product. It's awesome. It's uh, one of the only things that I've seen that can simplify that process and make it a viable option to be posting, um, you know, blog blog syndication on tier two or two tier networks. OK. And um, again, I, I don't know if that offer is still open, but I know we had kind of a sweet deal from Damon uh, that people from our list could continue to purchase. So I don't know if we have that link, but if you want to drop yeah, it, that's we'll... awesome. It looks like it is. I'll put it in. That's awesome. Um, that's the only thing I have until RSS Masher. I've been recommending against it. Now, if you're using RSS Masher, uh, I see it as giving us the ability to um, simplify blog syndication on tier two networks and it to where it's more manageable. It's still more work. There's no doubt. There's still more work to do that, but it will minimize your footprint uh, and make it, it'll simplify that process and make it more manageable, easier to maintain. Okay. Um, as far as that, if you don't, if you don't have that and you don't plan on using that, you can still use those three persona rings. Again, you just got to add additional content sources in as uh, tier two triggers or just use them for like, um, you know, 
video syndication or something like that. You know, if you don't want to tie them back to your blog at all, which is fine, you could use them for like video syndication or you could use them for, uh, you know, at any other projects that you got coming up. All right. Jane's up. Hi, guys. It's been a little while since I have submitted a question, but been on the sideline of absorbing your greatness. I will plus one that. I see Marco is still looking tanned, cute, and bear like. <laughs> oh, I will plus one that. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Anyway, here's my question. Question one I noticed through testing that Bing seems to be more lucrative for acquiring B2B projects, as it appears that most corporates tend to be stocked up with the preloaded Internet Explorer and Bing as the default search engine. Do you think that the future for more sizable project will be coming from Google, but for more sizable project will not be coming from Google, but from Bing, as it has a higher conversion rate with less traffic, but higher quality? Should we therefore not be looking at targeting our efforts to Google for B2C for business to consumer and Bing for B2B? Question two, is there, uh, is there a way to address AMP pages production and is there a technique for pushing them to Google News? Keep up the great work, Jane. Okay, Jane, I'll let Marco answer the second question. But for the first question, um, I'm not sure what you're asking for about with that specifically other than should we be focusing somewhat on Bing? And my answer to that is absolutely yes. And I only know that because I just recently for the uh, case study, it's an affiliate project um, that I'm doing for the um, masterclass. For masterclass, we have a live case study going on right now. It's an affiliate project and I'm just crushing it. I'm doing really, really well with uh, generating traffic right now. And I started and it's all, I'm doing all paid traffic, nothing organic, at least at the moment. It's not, it's just strictly paid traffic. And I've been using Google AdWords, but uh, a few weeks ago, I decided to start playing around in Bing ads and I'm getting really good results from Bing ads, um, like really good results. My cost per conversion is lower than my Google cost per conversions. Um, it's, it's, it's working really, really well. So I know that Bing is absolutely something that should be um, added. It should, you know, it shouldn't be overlooked all too often. We overlook Bing guys and you know, Bing and Yahoo together now make up for, it's about a third of the search traffic. So that's a significant amount of traffic. Um, I know Hernan said that there, it's like, it, it's a different demographic often. And it, sound, it sounds like Jane, you're kind of confirming that, um, that it may be the older demographic, uh, you know, 45 plus crowd that is heavy on the Bing, um, you know, the Bing network, but it also could be a lot more corporate stuff as well. And that makes sense to me because you're right. A lot of the, um, you know, uh, computers and network services and stuff like that are all Microsoft based. And so that that very well could be true. And I had never even thought about that. But I know that it, to to ignore Bing is really stupid, in my opinion. Now, for SEO, it's been difficult because if you're optimizing for Google, that usually didn't translate well into Bing. Bing, you could get away with a hell of a lot more like, you know, for on page stuff, you could keyword stuff a lot more. Your keyword density could be a lot higher. You could for backlinks for off page stuff, you could do a hell of a lot more exact match anchors and that would rank using exact match domain in Bing will help you to rank in Bing really easily. There's a lot of things that you can get away with in Bing that you can't in Google. And so typically if we optimize for Google, you end up not optimized very well for Bing because you're not, you're, you're not over optimized like you, like Bing likes, I guess. So, but strictly from a paid standpoint, a paid traffic standpoint, um, it's absolutely silly to ignore Bing in my opinion. Because it's basically uh, a clone of the AdWords dashboard, if not a little bit funkier. It's no doubt the Bing dashboard's a little bit funkier than AdWords, but it's damn near the identical. And uh, and if you know how to run AdWords and uh, excuse me, um, PPC campaigns and AdWords, you can do it in Bing, and you'll probably get results similar to what I'm seeing, which is going to be uh, really good traffic and um, you know a good amount of leads, lower cost per conversion, that sort of thing. Okay. Mark, do you want to take question two? Yeah, question two is simple because uh, what our plugin does is it turns the page into AMP automatically and it, it delivers the, 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 the page as an AMP page. So the, there's no page production. All you have to do is uh, do, uh, post the, you know, upload the page in, into the website if you do whatever it is that you're doing it, and our, our plugin will turn it into an AMP page. Now, what we're doing also and I have to I have to make that available is that if, if you're posting, it'll make a post into an AMP page. So that, that takes care of, uh, of any production. Is there a technique for pushing them to Google News? Uh, 
unless you have a recognized uh, news site, it's really difficult to get into Google News. Uh, so I, I, I don't see a way of, of, of like tricking. Uh, I, like I, I haven't looked into it. I haven't looked into the algorithm and how to trick Google into accepting just any website in, into Google News. But it might be something worth looking into. Uh, if you haven't joined the, the M Creators Mastermind in Facebook, I suggest that you do so because I will make that plugin available uh, shortly. We have two versions, and I, I'm going to make at least one of them available in, in, the, in the next few days. So I, I, hope, I hope that answers the question. I, and I would agree with her on the first part, just absolutely, uh, uh, that uh, Bing has uh, uh, less traffic, but, but it's a higher conversion rate. And the client is usually worth more because of the demographic. So, yes, to, to that question also. Awesome. Thank you. We're, uh, we got only got about three minutes left, guys, because we got to get ready for the local Kingpin update webinar. But um, we're going to try to run through a couple more very, very quickly. Robert says, Bradley, if I have, and Happy New Year to you as well, buddy, uh, a YouTube accounts built with Browsio that are set up on different IPs and in good standing and age with supporting tier accounts, etc. I intend to continue using these accounts within Browsio. If I then put them in the mega ray, same YouTube accounts, wouldn't that create a problem for my accounts? Robert, I, I assume it would, but I don't know for sure. What I would suggest is don't test it with one of your aged accounts that you've been building a digital footprint with inside of Browsio. I would not do that. Guys, a digital footprint is a good thing now. <laughs> it really is, as long as you're not uh, spamming. And that's what Browsio allows us to do is uh, create digital, build digital footprints for our personas, which is incredibly powerful. That said, Robert, it, what I would do is take a new channel and try it in both. What I'm saying is put it in Browsio, assign it to a proxy, an IP or whatever, uh, log in, do a little bit of activity, watch a couple videos, like a couple videos, that kind of stuff, and then add it to uh, Mega Ray and then start trying to post on it and see if it causes a problem. If it you know uh, locks the account, ask for re-verification, then you know it's a problem. But it's a new account then and you're not losing an aged account. So I would test that. I can't give you an answer because I don't know. I assume it would cause a problem. Yes. And you, like you said, you answered your own question. I, I, my assumption is that is a correct uh, guess or a correct assumption. Okay. But I don't know without testing. So I would suggest you test that with a new account so that if you lose it, it's not a big deal. Okay. If that is the case, a problem from two sources, then my best option, if I decide to use Mega Ray is to populate it with all new YouTube accounts, tiers, et cetera. Yes. And that's what I would do, Robert. Because I would be using those accounts more for spam purposes than I would be for like aged accounts like what I would be building in Browsio anyways. So because of that, I would basically buy a whole bunch of YouTube accounts from Metro Biz, the one I just showed it earlier on this webinar, for real. I'd buy them all from him. And then I would go and I would add all those accounts into uh, Mega Ray. Okay. And also, what is your real take on Mega Ray? It's awesome. It's awesome, guys. Uh, you know, I mentioned this before. We, we did a promotion for Video Marketing Blitz, which is Ab's product. Ab's is a great developer. I've been buying his products literally for five or six years now. Um, no kidding. So I, Ab's got great products, except Video Marketing Blitz is, a, is complex because there's a ton of tools, and so there's a learning curve. Very, very powerful, no doubt, but it's a there's a learning curve. Mega Ray is incredibly simple. Very, very powerful. It, put it, think of it this way. It's like Sendwire on steroids. It really is. It's like an enterprise-level send wire. And, uh, and it also, as far, except that as far as the posting goes, posting within mega ray is a lot easier than it is within send wire. Um, send wire, there's a lot of manual work. Um, that's kind of the reason why I just stopped using it. Mega ray is a lot more automated. So it's a, it's a great product guys. There's no doubt, or we wouldn't have promoted it. And I know there's a lot of development behind them and a good support staff. And, uh, we got to go guys. I do want to just very, very quickly, uh, cover Daryl's question about social links that's abs product we we're just talking about video marketing blitz abs product a new one is out it's called social links i'm really surprised he didn't reach out to us and ask us to be um a jv or you know a, an affiliate for him because we usually do well promoting his products because we we all believe in his products and think that he's got good products but for whatever reason we're not an affiliate for it i haven't tested it i can tell you though pretty much everything that he puts out guys is good product and uh, and i don't say that about a lot of developers. Um, so, you know, if abs put it out, my guess is it's probably a really good product, Daryl. So I, I don't have an opinion on it because I didn't get a chance to test it and I'm mad at abs for that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. All right. We got to wrap it up, guys. Bye bye, everyone. Right. Thank you. Have a good one. Yeah. Thanks everybody for being here. We'll see you all uh, <laughs> just a few minutes. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.